In this video, I'm going to break down a few lighting setups from a recent short with small rig. We'll take a look at a moody indoor scene, an exterior in harsh sunlight, and an indoor scene mixing natural light. For my camera, I went with the Sony FX3 and a set of DZO Vespa primes with a small rig wireless follow focus. Starting with the opening frame, you'll notice some parvo tubes in the background. The hallway was pretty dark and boring and the tubes created a nice reflection on the floor, the walls, and on the tin roof above. Coming around the corner, we used these top windows as the main source of light. First thing to note is this beam of light running along the wall, which creates a lot of interest in the scene with a subtle ray. This was achieved using a Nanlite Forza 720B with a projector attachment, shining from the outside. Even though the windows are small, the only way to actually get a solid beam is by focusing the light with a lens. The same light is responsible for this nice rim on our subject. Add some haze to the scene and the beam becomes more apparent. For fill, I used a Nanlite Forza 500 on a big 1.5 meter softbox just out of frame to the right. As always, we're lighting for the space and not the face, which is why the intensity is lower on the wide to ensure we keep the moodiness of the beam and any excess light will spill onto the wall. When you compare the wide to the medium to the close-up, you'll see how the skin is progressively lit better, which is due to the fact that we're able to bring the light closer for softer shadows. Unfortunately, bringing the light closer does come at a cost. As it switches on, you can see that we start to lose the beam against the wall. The viewer won't notice this because of the tighter framing, but it's something to be mindful of. Regardless of the order you shoot in, it's important to always start with lighting your wide first and then work your way inwards. Even though your tighter shot might be lit brighter than your medium and your wide, because it's further away, the eye doesn't pick up on it. In the final frame, you can clearly see the rim going into the fill with a gradual fade into the shadows. The grid on the softbox keeps the background dark, so we've got a nice checkerboard going with bright dark, bright dark. Same for the wide, dark bright, dark bright dark. I've made an entire video about this concept, but the goal is to create pockets of light and the contrast between the two will give you more depth in the frame. For the gym scenes, I mostly use the same lighting setup, but here placement is everything. The room has these big openings in the roof that floods the area with natural light, but this made the scenes feel a bit flat, so we moved all the workouts to the far left of the gym, so that the top light comes more from the right with no light coming from the left. Having a strong light that can compete with natural light is invaluable, and here the Forza 500 really shines. Using the same big 1.5 meter softbox, we put it on the right side to help motivate the top light and blasted it at 100%, creating depth from light to dark. We duplicated the setup for every shot with a few angle adjustments, some around 20 degrees and others at around 45, to get more full in the face. For this shoot, I still use the first version of the Forza 500, but Nanlite recently released a version 2 with some crazy improvements, including a bicolor option, so definitely go check that out. Shooting outside in the middle of the day can be quite a challenge. First, we need to diffuse the harsh backlight coming from behind. An 8x8 scrim gym with a half silk does the trick. We're doing this to get more depth to shoot from the shadow side, but not without a decent amount of fill. Instead of using a bounce, I went with the Forza 500 because it's easier to manage in the wind, and we could utilize the extra hands to hold the scrim without having to use more stands and a ton of sandbags. The sun was bouncing a lot of red back from the racetrack, especially on the shadow side, something I took care of in post by qualifying the skin. It's not always possible to diffuse the backlight, but at least getting full with a gradual fade into the shadows will keep the image from falling flat. This video is proudly brought to you by the Alpha Universe, a free learning platform with educational content from a variety of photographers and filmmakers across all genres. I currently have an exclusive training series on there that you can unlock for free by simply registering your Sony gear. 